Now we got Babs right here. <laughs> oh, live. Here She's so needy. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we just may be live right now. Looks like it. If you can hear us live, can you guys in the comments let us know that we are rocking and rolling? Yeah, let us know. Welcome, everyone. Well, drop a comment. Uh, drop uh, any questions that you have during the live stream. This yeah. is gonna be a lot of fun. Tonight's a super special night. We've got some beautiful schooly friends on here, some of our favorites, and we're going to answer some questions. A lot of questions that we get all the time that we thought would be pretty fun to ask some of our friends. Um, we'll be taking questions in the comments, accepting super chats, for our top comments and spreading the love amongst our buddies. Absolutely. If you want a super chat, there's a dollar sign underneath the chat area. You click that. It's going to be divided between all of us uh, and it'll go towards schoolie builds and diesel fuel and stuff like that. <laughs> there is about a 20 second delay from Zoom to what's going on. So uh, just keep oh, chatting yeah. away and uh, we'll keep on trying to keep up with the, all the comments and stuff. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start off by telling everyone a bit about ourselves and what made us want to do a bus conversion. And since Randy and Shelly are up in the top corner on my screen, we're going to start with you guys. And they were the first ones on today. <laughs> we're eager beavers. <laughs> um, I'm Shelly Knapp with Nap Time, and um, why did we want to do this? She wanted an RV. She wanted to retire and travel. I thought we'd get a Class A RV, but I didn't want to buy a new one, so I thought I'd buy a wrecked one. Our son offered us his fifth wheel because he's in Ecuador, and he only uses it every four years. Oh. I didn't want to pull the fifth wheel, so instead I chose a 40-foot bus with 20 foot more behind it. I don't know how that happened, but that was the evolution. She yeah. wanted to retire and travel. The it, was, it was time to do something different after um, we had been doing our current thing for 31 years, so we were looking for a new adventure and, yeah. and fell into the schoolie world. You know, it just... And the bus thing seemed to be perfect because we could make it the way we want. I just didn't think it would take two freaking years. That's <laughs> all. He told me six months, you guys. I it's thought, a, honestly, I it's thought It's a year six and a months. half later. <laughs> and um, we're still not done. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's how it happened. Look at all I think we all understand that so far that Absolutely. it's longer than expected. Yeah. yeah. We had the idea that it was going to take, what, like three months or something like that? <laughs> Unrealistic. Unrealistic. Yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> I remember that. You guys were like, yeah, we're going to be done in August. I was like, mm hmm. You're all like, Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> we'll in August. <laughs> that's funny all right we've got also cat and cam cooper with the wonder boy bus wonder boy, wonder boy. boy. tenacious d <laughs> if anybody doesn't know that reference all right tell us a little bit about yourselves and why you're doing a bus conversion don't get me singing <laughs> <laughs> well we're cat and cam cooper um we decided to do our a bus because uh I think we had a trip to, it was Oregon last year. We just kind of up and went and got in, our, uh, got in the car and just drove out there with the dogs and everything. And we just kind of, you know, we were sitting there and realizing and kind of, we are kind of hating the fact that we just couldn't do that all the time. And so it was kind of right then that we were like, you know, we really want to change some stuff. So we, we, we just like traveling. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really hard when you have a huge house payment and you can't only really do as much as you really want to. At the end of the day so so yeah. pretty much yeah just building the bus gonna sell the house hopefully here within the next three months and yep. wow. get out of here so <laughs> and then, from there. And then buy some land homesteads Ooh, yes homestead two of them. <laughs> two. nice so yeah it's like climates or something yeah yeah <laughs> That's right. so we we don't like staying still i guess i don't know uh, no not really yeah so I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, Meredith and Paco. And Joey. And Joey. So Joey <laughs> and, and Joey. Uh, yeah, so we're Meredith and Paco, and we just kind of fell into building a bus. 
we both kind of struggle with knowing who we are and what we want out of life. So we just kind of want to have the freedom to explore that and figure that out and do it together and just see where it goes. So it has a lot to do with finding ourselves, finding freedom and the adventure and traveling part of it is like the biggest bonus ever. So it's a little bit of everything for us. We also did not think it was going to take over two years to get it done. Very true. But uh, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so originally, did you feel, think it was one year or something? <laughs> like six months more. Our original was like six months. It, we, we wanted it to be livable by six months because we were getting married. And in six months, we wanted to move into it and then finish it together and then start adventuring. And yeah. by our honeymoon, we had just... Uh, gutted it and we were like um it's gonna take a while probably so <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, a minute. i think that whenever it comes to building that it can be done pretty freaking quick if you're not filming if you're not editing Ooh, if you don't yeah, have a yeah. job that you have to go to if you got the cash to afford all the components yeah. and stuff sure. like you probably could do it pretty quick but but then like your hits. dreams start coming into play and you're like as soon as you start getting kind of good with things your creative mind starts going and then it went from like just like kind of a simple kitchen to a really wow kitchen and like a really cool bathroom or whatever it's like all these ideas start to happen or hey let's build an underbody like just like things <laughs> that you weren't really planning on that you're like oh all of a sudden we need this. Oh, because if we saw this on an on Pinterest or a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, the plans are pretty much always changing. That's for sure. <laughs> or you watch somebody oh, yeah. else fully build and then you get inspired by what they're doing and go, hey, can we possibly do that? So yeah, that gets you in trouble sometimes too. <laughs> and if you cut it in two, oh yeah. When you cut it in two, you're really screwed because then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're in it to win it at that point no start you yeah. gotta you gotta really commit by then for yeah. sure yeah so joelle just asked why a bus over a step van or a box truck who wants to grab that one bus is big you gotta be big if you want big yeah. You got to get a bus. Well, if you're going to live in it full time like we are, that's why we chose the bus. Yeah, and, and we chose a 40-footer because we knew it would be a big lifestyle change to downsize from a home to right. live in tiny. So we're both like, yeah, that's as tiny as we want to go. So that's why we chose a 40-foot bus. Huh? We liked the durability of them, too. Absolutely. Just how yeah. tough they are and how much they can take. And when you look at those pictures of people that will put up, you know, things that RVs have been through and how one little gust of wind and your whole house is ruined. And then a bus can take like a whole tree falling on it and it's still repairable. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you've never gone safety. to Google and Google RV wrecks, go do that. <laughs> or don't do RV, that because it'll scare you. Yeah. It explodes, it explodes and it's all over the place. Buses are designed to roll and then, then you just ride them up and keep on going. Like they're yeah. tanks. <laughs> when I was 18, I worked in a trailer house factory. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> that's enough set, I yeah. can tell you yeah. that. <laughs> Were you on double or single wides? Uh, singles and double wides, both. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It was enough there that I didn't. Uh, and one of the few things she told me when I got married was I never, she said, I don't care where we live as long as it's not a trailer house. <laughs> I love I didn't want that. So yeah, a bus is not a trailer house. <laughs> no, it has wheels. Yes, they're good. That's right. Well, no, wheels. Well, Jeez. Come on. That's great. The chat is just blowing up right now. I'm going to apologize to everybody because I'm having a lot of fun and keeping up with comments is tough. Um, but. <laughs> Someone, uh, Aubrey, asked us where we got the bracket our bed is on to lift it up. We made that out of an old couch. Well, kind of. If you're talking about the uh, the strut bracket itself, we got that on Amazon. It's just called a bed lift kit, and it has the gas strut on it. Um, I think it's on our Amazon store. I think we might have put it on that. Mm -hmm. um, 
in all the descriptions, there's the Amazon store link. You could click on that and go poking around to find stuff. But yeah, we just I think everybody's got that on yeah. their YouTube videos. So. That bracket is mounted to a IKEA day frame day bed frame that was like a trundle bed. So what we did was Aaron's old couch. We took all the stuff off of it, took the metal frame, put it together, <laughs> welded it together, and then that made the queen size bed frame. And then we mounted the bracket to it. I think we've got a video somewhere about mm -hmm. that. Um, we could drop that later. Yep. They are. Um, okay. Whose idea was it to do the conversion? Meredith and Paco. Meredith? Mine, for Absolutely. sure. Here's Mine's here. kind of a boring story. It's one that a lot of people have. Um, I I like to watch things that inspire me, things about travel, things about you know people that do things differently. So I watched that thing on Netflix. And if you watch that, those poor things just had a disaster of a trip, but it still looked <laughs> great to me because it had the chance of being amazing. Mm -hmm. So I brought it to him. He's Mr. Facts and Figures. So I said, okay, I have an idea. And he really, he like, his heart always sinks when I come to him. And that's how I start my sentence. It, it, even, when it, like, even when it has to do with a bus. It's like, oh boy. Because I mean, it'll just, it'll be like, so I have an idea. He's like, oh God. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I explained it to him and his face is slowly just kind of like, what? And he said, okay, I'm going to level with you. If you can prove that it's possible. If you can prove that it's doable, as in like doing YouTube and a blog or social media can make some sort of income, even a little bit. If you prove that it's possible, then we'll do it. And from there, I started to work really hard on everything online and build, you know, build a following and a growing. And then he started to see that it was possible. And then we started shopping for buses. And then he just kind of, I just kind of have to like slowly show him things be like, oh, hey, look at this picture. Isn't that cool? And he's like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. And then he slowly builds it up and he's like, all right, we're going to go to Austin to pick out a bus. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just kind of grew from there. I'm Meredith, I call that planting the seed. That's a yeah. wife's job. That is <laughs> what we are good at. That's what we are good at. I tell you that right now. Takes practice. That's awesome. Um, Kat and Cam, whose idea? I think it was more Cameron's idea than anything because but I remember just like mm -hmm. walking in and uh, Karen was just going down the rabbit hole on van life <laughs> videos. And then van life videos turned into bus life videos. And then yeah. it was just like, just on and on and on. And finally he was like, you know, he's like, I think we could do this. I think we could really, really do this. And so uh, yep. I think it was definitely- Well, we, we actually lived in Indianapolis for a bit and uh, uh, we had an RV, but we ended up uh, having to sell it when we moved back to Utah, so uh that never panned out but it's not like we we're gonna live in that piece no <laughs> <laughs> I think when we first got it we had big like, plans and we ended up opening up the door and then like, like no we were like bug bomb inside and yeah. it just i was like it was so nasty but yeah but yeah no it was fun but yeah. it's just uh it's, i don't know we just like to travel around and you know you can do things around the world that eat the, i mean even way easier without having house payments or you know just uh three thousand four thousand five thousand dollars every month of bills so yeah you know and it's just silly because it's if you just do it because you just want to be happy whatever makes you happy so that's I, where I, we're happiest well i told family she was like we can do it i was like as, as long as she's you like, know that you can build it she's and like, we can, you can get it done she's like, but I don't know anything about that stuff so it needs to be nice though yeah it needs to be nice so. <laughs> you're not going to throw a couch in there no. <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh here's my house <laughs> I like the thing of being able to say that well, you have a new backyard to play in all the time exactly. uh, yeah. That's yeah. A good yeah. with eagles yeah oh yeah yeah totally so it's like every week you can have a different backyard you know to play in so that's what we're looking forward to yeah that's me fun it's cool. yeah yeah nice for us we were van lifing hardcore on youtube just like 
watching so much van life stuff and then we were in colombia in santa marta and next thing you know we're in this small little apartment well the kitchen was very small the rest of the place was kind of cool but it was an outdoor kitchen it was miniature and every time you open the fridge or open the oven or something like that the other person was like trapped in this little teeny <laughs> space yeah and our kitchen flow went <laughs> down the toilet and we were both like this is impossible <laughs> like we were getting mad at each other we kick, we cook all day like yeah. we love cooking so for us it was just like a non-negotiable to be in a space that was too small to like dance in the kitchen yeah so I originally when we were looking us at too with the bus though because we just love to cook <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So originally for us, like we were looking at the vans a whole lot. We were like, oh, we can get an extra large sprinter with or extra long with the extra high roof and everything. And still, I was just like, ah, I'm six two. I don't think I could freaking do this. So we put it on the shelf. We continued traveling through Colombia. We headed um, after that to Ecuador, traveled through there, Galapagos, ended up in Bonaire. And then we started seeing school bus conversions. And then that's where everything changed. Yeah. I was like, huh, I could probably do that. That could probably work. And then whenever I, think I saw a pin, yeah. I saw this pin of this like really cool layout in a kitchen that I had never seen. And I was like, oh, that's it. Yeah. So she showed me that and I was like, hmm, yeah, yeah, this is, this is ideal. What are these schoolies? What yeah. is this schoolie thing? <laughs> what is schoolie? Precious. What is schoolie, precious? <laughs> We've got some more questions coming in. Harmony Express Schoolie says, how much traveling are you guys planning on doing? Full time, y'all. Let's start with the naps. <laughs> Um, our goal is to live in the bus at least five to 10 years. I mean, this is our home. We sold our home. We actually sold our home three months after we bought our bus. And, and so Ooh. we were committed. We, we, we were jumping in. So this is it for us. It's got to fit in the bus or we don't own it. Nice. Not, yes, not true yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. True. It will be in a few months. <laughs> we let go of so much stuff, but we still have another another two or three gleanings another purge yeah. <laughs> that's the yeah. hard part eh fit in the bus or the tow behind vehicle right that's right that's right, right. that's why oh, the we're... storage had to be built <laughs> we need another purge exactly cat and cam what about y'all y'all gonna go full time yeah we're uh yep. doing full time i mean once we sell the house uh, and whatnot i mean we probably I think we kind of agreed that we're going to do at least two years full-time traveling. Uh, we do want we to know. probably buy some land then after about, you know, one and a half, two years, probably kind of start homesteading, probably maybe live on the bus while we build like a little cabin or something like that. But um, that's kind of the plan right now. But, you know, things, things change. We're not allowed to leave the country. What else can we do? <laughs> <laughs> we can't even go to Canada, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, we're Sad. in a situation with that. You guys got to come up here. We're like splitting borders right now. Yeah. <laughs> Better than Paco, full-time, part-time? Uh, we are hoping to do full-time. That's the goal. Um, but one thing we have learned through this is that although it has taken a really long time and longer than you think, if you rush something, it, it takes a lot of the fun out of it. So if you put really stressful deadlines, if you're like, we got to do this, 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 and this, it makes it not fun anymore. So we do want to do full time and we do want to travel, but we don't, we stop setting like, okay, we want to do like a year. We're going to cover this much ground. We're going to do this and this and this, because we just had to focus on just the build mm -hmm. and enjoying that, doing it properly, not letting it, you know, get in the way of other things and then think about traveling as well. So we want to yeah. travel full time, but we just want to kind of easy, easy, you know, go along, see places that interest us, meet awesome people, do some awesome hikes and learn new skills. And then maybe eventually um, we thought it would be cool to either buy a piece of land and park the bus on it. And then if living in the bus goes well, just casually, we thought it would be cool to do a van and maybe do some traveling in Europe in smaller, you know, bits just to be able to fit on those tiny roads and stuff maybe eventually. But 
that's a ways down the road. We're going to focus on the build right now. So we, we, we keep saying that eventually all of us are going to get tired and we're all going to commune somewhere on a piece of property. Oh, instead of it, instead of a trailer so down? park, be a school <laughs> park. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. I know, doesn't it? <laughs> We're gonna buy a big piece of land in Colombia and then just all live there on the mountains. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Because Paco, you're from Colombia. I See? am. Yeah, I was, I was actually born there and I lived there for nine years. Oh. So, what part of Colombia? Uh, it's called Pereira. 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 Where is that? Oh. That's somewhere near the cent south central area of, Pere of Colombia. Right in the okay. middle. Yeah. yeah. It's in the mountains. <laughs> in the mountains are yeah, gorgeous. Kind of pretty much. <laughs> we didn't do enough mountains when we were there because Brad got no. altitude sickness. Pretty bad. So we had to go to the coast. <laughs> so he didn't die. Yeah, the coast pretty good too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but then we also did hike through uh, Ciudad Perdida up through Minca. Okay. Yeah. That was gorgeous. Was 52 miles in four days. That was intense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I like the birds that Aaron found on our Galapagos. What was those birds? The what? The, the, the birds? Oh. <laughs> we found I the saw your video. birds on Galapagos. <laughs> the blue-footed boobies? Which ones? The blue-footed boobies? Oh, and no. What are the other guys? Uh, fregatas. Fregatas. <laughs> the pirates of the sky. <laughs> yeah. uh, Danny keeps asking if Paco is a WWE fan. Absolutely. Why would you ask that? I used to love it. I don't know. Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak. Because Danny keeps well, saying that. I, I, I asked that because nobody really knows that about me. So the fact that somebody is even thinking about that is uh, a little odd and kind of scary. <laughs> Danny, yeah. smell what you were cooking. <laughs> the rock says cool all right glad we covered that one uh while design okay while designing is function over form always hmm. we're kind of like we fight we don't fight over it but brian is always like more logical and i'm always like super, like let's make it rounded and he's like oh my god rounded and then we have to figure out how to do that. What about you guys, Meredith and Paco? With, it's, uh, it's definitely a mix. It has to look good, but it has to be functional. Um, yeah. yeah. We've had a lot of practice living in very small apartments. And so it being functional is important because when it's not, will you, sir? <laughs> so when it's not, it just, it can get really frustrating. And then if you have a lot of storage, but it's not easy to get to, you never end up using any of that stuff because right. it's too big of a mm -hmm. pain in the butt to get to it. But uh -huh. I mean, right. if it's also, especially if it is full time for you, if it's going to be your home, you want it to feel homey. You want it to, you know, look nice and you want to be able to have some pictures or some personal stuff and, you know, it to feel like a home. So a little bit of both, some balance. Give and take. And the, the fact that we're doing it ourselves gives us the, the liberty to make it do what we want it to do, but also give an artistic touch to some of the things that we want. Yeah. yeah. That is so You guys have the best good. storage doors. I love them. Yeah, thank like you. the storage doors. And thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Boy, what about you guys? Function over form or form over function? Uh, I don't know. Probably, I mean, probably more function right now, but I mean, you guys are way more ahead in your build than we are. I mean, we're still kind of getting into it. We're getting our electrical done here, like really, really soon. But I mean, we haven't really started building anything, but I think that, uh, probably, I mean, function, it's a small space. And I mean, we're going from a 3000 square foot house into a bus. So, you know, if things don't, if things don't work, then, you know, it's probably just not going to be too good. Plus it's we have, both. yeah. Well, yeah, both. both. I think just what wow. you guys said though, is like, I, we want it to look good. You know, we definitely want it to look good, but you know, just it has to make sense too at the same time. <laughs> well, yeah. I think too, it's like building your own cabinet, stuff like that, instead of just going and buying them. You know, just you can save so much more space that way. You know. Yeah. 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 So. What about you, Naps? You guys are so creative. Is it hard to like pick function over creativity? 
Well, for part of part of us having um, worked together for 31 years, we knew we needed, and, and having been married for so long, we're married a lot longer than you guys. We know that we need separate spaces to be able to get away from each other. Mm -hmm. So that was a major consideration. And that's, that's more about layout, but, form over but, function. But yeah, but because of that, then it had to function good in both yes. places. Um, yeah. So if I'm in the back in the bedroom, and that's why we chose to do the Murphy bed, then it could be a, a place where I feel just as comfortable as he feels in the front of the bus. So, yeah. but it's yeah, fun. just like you guys were saying, Mar um, Meredith and Paco, yeah, art is very important to us because we're from an art, art yeah, background. Yeah, but I don't, it's function. It has yeah, to the function, function to our needs right, and right, right. try to make it be artistic because yeah. we wanted a bathtub and that's the one thing we couldn't <laughs> yeah. squeeze We had in. to compromise on the bathtub. <laughs> Freaking so. bathtub went away. I was like, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're like, what can, what can you get thrown out? I did see a oh. roll up uh, hot tub the other day, and I was like, hmm. That yeah, our, our, son, into. <laughs> our son actually, they, they lived in a fifth wheel for a while before they went to Ecuador, and they got a little um, foldable bathtub that fit in their shower. And well, he said, yeah, you know, kind of an inflatable. And he goes, mom, you should get one of these. And I said, yeah, but you're a lot younger and more limber than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a stretch out. <laughs> uh, I need one of those fancy kind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do but body origami to get in it. What was that? You have to do body origami just to get in the tub. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say, you know, we've been living in the bus for six months while we're doing the, still doing the conversion. So it has opened our eyes up to everything that we thought was going to work. Some stuff didn't, but most everything is working. So you do have to kind of think ahead of how you're going to live in it. Right, right. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So when it comes to building a bus, and I've seen this uh, in a lot of different comments on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, here on YouTube also, where where did you get the knowledge for building? And this goes for everybody. So Meredith and Paco, you guys start. How did that all materialize? Did you have background in construction, in a trade, like... YouTube University. I mean, it for sure is YouTube University. For sure. Yeah, at least 99% of it is. Yeah. I come from a creative background for sure. I've been creating since I you know, was born in all different types of ways with my hands. I'm also a dancer, so just creating that type of way. I always took a lot of art classes, photography. So the creative aspect, I've always had that. And I've always enjoyed working with my hands and building. And yep. my, my, uh, my papa is a builder and he's always built stuff. And my mom is the same way she creates, but I'm just a kind of, uh, I don't have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just going to go for it and make it happen. Kind it of person. It can be very frustrating sometimes. So <laughs> I may, I may have the idea to build something and have no idea, but I'm going to build it. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So then he comes in and he's like, wait a minute. She's the kind of person to just go for it. Like no measurements, nothing mm -hmm. else. Just, just like, okay, I have an idea. Yes. Just start Do doing it. stuff. And I'm, I'm more of a, okay, you gotta measure twice, cut once. So we gotta find a guy. good balance. So he definitely is the, you know, okay, well, we want it to last a long time. We want it to be able to, you know, like a bed, we gotta have, have it hold us up and move in a vehicle. So he'll do the research and all that kind of stuff. And then I was like, okay, with a little bit of learning, we can do something like really awesome. So then when he was busy, I would start, you know, doing research at home and looking all this stuff up and, and then I would show him stuff and he would deduce it down and then we would have a good combination. So and there's, there's a lot of good uh, information out there, whether it's on YouTube on blog or what I wouldn't have been able to do the electric uh, closet without YouTube because I just, I wouldn't have been, I would, I, I need to have something visual to show me what to do. And by reading something, I'm not, that's not gonna be good enough. So just the fact that so many people have done this before us and have kind of paved the way for us to be able to learn it on our own um, helps a lot. Big yeah. time. Yeah. So true. 
Cool. Awesome answer. Cat and Cam. Well, I think I might let Cam answer most of this because most of my experience of building anything comes from uh, putting together things from Ikea. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's not I easy. did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did a lot of construction growing up, like to put myself through college. So I pretty much did everything except for electrical. And that's when we called Brian and Aaron. We're like, what do we do? <laughs> what do we what happened yeah our bus won't start again <laughs> so, i don't like electrical i'll tell you that yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do everything else it's fine but no uh, i mean you know youtube has been a tremendous help i oh, mean yeah. obviously yes youtube university so you know we don't uh we, I, th I think the one time, yeah, because I, I, the one time that um, we cu we started cutting wires like you're absolutely not supposed to do, right? Yeah, we And learned. so um, I cut the wires to the emergency exit door, and I think it was actually, we went and watched Meredith and Paco's video about that, and I was able to fix it and get the bus started again. So <laughs> thanks, Meredith and Paco, for that one. <laughs> yeah, guys. It wasn't that big of a deal. No, it wasn't, but I was now like, oh, like, no. Like, oh, That's the moment it was, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so no honestly like without youtube you know, it would be so hard you know mm -hmm. it's just yeah. a learning experience literally every day you know yes yeah. mm -hmm. yes randy and shelly well <laughs> See, I, mean, I saw that <laughs> I, I, think from, I have three i have two sons oh. and one of my sons we have two sons one of my one of them are both <laughs> brilliant <laughs> <laughs> they're, both, they're both brilliant they're really smart and and they both are into technology one more than the other uh the one that's in te technology he i would be like how do you blah 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 connect this to that and he'd be like oh you go to the sea blah 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 and i go how do you know that we thought he was so smart he is smart yeah. but he he gave me this tip he said dad put in the keyword search it in youtube and that's been my best <laughs> if I don't know how to do something, I put in the keywords, look at YouTube. And for the bus, when I saw Wes Lewis do the roof raise, I was like, oh, that solves me being six foot four. I don't have to worry. Because I'm six foot four, I don't fit in most of the buses. So Wes Lewis, and then that put me onto the schoolie thing. And from there, yeah, it just it uh, just blew up. Yeah, he, so I, I mean, had, he, he I had, was obsessed with with YouTube. Well, this perfect a perfect project for me because I did ten years in a, as a glazer. Uh, you know what that with is? Glass. You cut glass, auto glass, storefront glass, construction, remodel. I've done lots of remodeling and housework and stuff like that. I was a glass blower for ten years. Oh. Um, no, that was only a couple of years. Yeah, that was about yeah. Anyways, I was always in uh, and, and woodworking. construction and yeah. woodworking. And woodworking. It's a school Since of hard knocks, see? Yeah. You don't want to come up short. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? How did that happen? This was, a, this was a, when we were very young, when we had children in diapers and we were remodeling this 50-year-old house, we were taking out those walls you didn't want from the small house and putting up a beam and uh, a chop saw. You know, the guys were holding up this four by 12 beam and I tried to just. Chop saw on the floor in sawdust. Yeah, you really don't, you really want your chop saw in an anchored position, yeah. right? Because when I lost leverage on the board, it slipped out from under me and it just slipped my hand through the, through the blade. Oh, so when I see oh. people using the chop saw. Oh yeah, we cringe. And the other end is not supported. I'm like, yeah, there you go. You don't want to do that. But anyhow. But uh, he has ever since, I mean, he, he took woodworking in high school. So Randy's yeah. done woodworking his whole life. So. But yeah. this is outside of, I mean, the woodworking is easy for me, but all the other the crap, metal I had stuff, no, no yeah. idea. But luckily one of my really good buddies is two of them are master metal workers. So that's been a blessing. Yeah, we yeah. have been very fortunate to be in the spot where we're at. For yeah, our, yeah. For and so I see Meredith. Meredith, you're my hero. Oh, yes. I watch you doing some stuff, and I'm like, look at she's gonna do it without Paco. He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's the way to do it. Superwoman. Superwoman. Rosie the Riveter's my hero. I'm I know. I know. Right? 
And then it also, I'm, I'm so impressed with the, I have all these tools and I'm so spoiled and I see what you guys have to work with. And I'm just like, I wish I could bring everything you need to you, but I'm like, oh, wow. we do too. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wish, I wish we had a barn. Yeah, I wish we had a barn. Yeah, right? <laughs> Wish we had a barn <laughs> way down on concrete instead of the ground. Yeah. Oh. Cool. <laughs> it's still dirty though, guys. And it's so cold. You have to turn the heaters off in here so because they're all like. Uh, uh. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're always crawling around in the muck somewhere. You're always. <laughs> we've we've learned cardboard is was our best friend when we were under the bus. Yeah. So man reaper. Always wet here. So. Then you just get soggy cardboard. You just have to get used to being dirty all the time when you work in the yeah. bus. Once you once you get past that, everything else just becomes easy. Yeah. 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 It does. yeah I think I have to buy like all new clothes because I think everything I own is covered in some form of sealant. Right. So. Regular. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. It's on every. She day. actually got it all over her teeth one day, and I was gonna take a video, but she went. Well. <laughs> I was like, how'd you get it on your teeth? <laughs> I had seam sealer on my forehead last night. And I was like, well, I guess this is just my <laughs> Yeah, I have a bus wardrobe, you know. This is yeah. bus clothes. Yeah. And then, yep. yeah. It's like, oh, I get to dress up today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can never wear jewelry anymore. Okay, did any of you guys have any questions? We still, we have a ton more questions, but we want to know, did any of you guys come prepared with any questions? Yeah. For Randy did, he raised his hand, what do you got? Yeah, what, what did you have to leave out? I couldn't get the bathtub in. What did you want that you've had to say, oh, that ain't gonna work? Ooh. For us, that wouldn't work? That we had to leave out. That you've had to compromise on. Yeah, what did you want? Like I wanted a five foot bathtub and instead we. we <laughs> <laughs> For us, it was the, the roof race. Yeah. We, we really wanted a roof race at, at the beginning, but because of time and costs, we yeah. decided to go just explain that idea. And we bid on a high top and we really, really wanted a high top, but it just started getting out of our budget. So we had to go with our plan B um because yeah. we did a a, uh, a festival we got to go inside some and we were like these these roof raises are awesome but that's going to take so long and cost so much and if you do it wrong everything else is screwed so we were worried about that and we just wanted to focus on everything else so we went for a high top didn't get that one so that's that's mainly the thing that we, we wish we had we but we don't mm -hmm. yeah Mm. For us, I think uh, we kind of made some sacrifices in our living room, I would say, because we decided to go big with the kitchen because we're always yeah. in the kitchen and we just wanted to have a big kitchen space. So I think our couches might end up being a little bit smaller and then we're still trying. Well, I think we found a place for our, our stove. A wood but, burning stove. The stove. Yeah. I don't know. We almost didn't have space for it. And we've been like rearranging stuff in our minds, trying to figure out where we're going to put it. Cause it's because we have a lot of windows. Yeah. <laughs> like that was one thing that we wanted. And that, that kind of just kind of materialized as we went, because when we got the bus, we had no idea we were going to get these massive six foot long windows. So when we found them, they're like a thousand dollars a piece. We got them for 150 bucks a piece. So we were all like, we'll take six of them. <laughs> and then her dad was all like, Brian, you're six two. When you're standing there, he had seen some other schooly uh, videos of some other people. Well, the guy was tall also, and he had to always look down to look out the window. He's just like, you're going to be totally screwed, Brian, if you don't make windows in, in the, the edges like uh, they do on scenic trains. And he left it at that. I was just like, all right, we're up for the challenge. Right. So I looked it up and we figured out how to make our scenic skylights down the yeah. sides. But that's so, kind of nipped us in the butt for storage, yeah. I would say. Cam and Kat, you guys had anything that you so uh, far done? Um, It'd be nice if you weren't so tall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so much easier. We were able to get the high roof on because Cameron is also 6'2. So 
you know, it, once we get everything, it is cutting it short, but you know, how often are you standing up in the bus and whatnot? But uh, other than that, I guess we're not, we're not doing a washer or washer dryer combo unit. So we might try to add one in later. We don't know for sure, but as of right now, you know, it's just maybe not something that we need right off the bat. We were thinking that we do, um, especially having the Husky with all the hair and everything, but I think we're just going to figure it out first. If we really do need something, we'll just go ahead and work it out afterwards. I think <laughs> that, that's about it. I but other than that, um, I we're, said we're pretty that, happy with everything we've got and the plans and all that. I mean, my non-negotiable was a king size bed. So we're having a king size bed because I'm not going back to a queen size bed. Yeah. So <laughs> Marilyn Paco, you guys have a king size also, right? <laughs> Because I'm queen over here, I'm adamant that the pets sleep with us. I just, I, I need them in the same bed. I love it. It makes me happy. And of course, they all sleep on me, so it doesn't affect him. But we still just need two. space. So, well, we got three animals too. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's all like, I want to cuddle. <laughs> yeah, I'll blame you. Love cuddling. <laughs> He loves cuddling. Loves snuggling. Yeah. Uh, we got well, the non-negotiable. Oh, someone. Go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, what have you guys found as the most challenging so far? So for like me, it's kind of funny. It's not so much bus conversion related, but it's having patience to get through this. Because you start out thinking you're going to be six months and then pretty soon it's a year and then it's a year and six months and you're like, okay, I've got patience. I, I can do this. I'm strong enough. So that's one of the things that's been the most challenging for me is, you know, keeping the faith and holding on to my, my patience and not losing the dream. So I was curious, did you guys, have you guys encountered what is your most struggling thing with the conversion? I, I would agree with that. Absolutely. Uh... If I had to say something differently, it would be not having the right tools for the job, but knowing there are right tools for the job. So oh, that's yeah. made the most frustrating part because you know that there, there is a right tool for the job. You just don't have it for whatever reason because you can't afford it because it's, they don't sell it at your Home Depot or you just have to make it your own, uh, your stuff. So that's for us, uh, other than the patients, the most frustrating thing. It's really hard because, I mean, I, I wish I could sit down and talk with everybody who's thinking about doing this because, I mean, it's amazing and the opportunities that you could have and what it could mean is awesome, but you do need to know that it is hard. It's hard. And yeah. so trying to pick one thing that's the most challenging, for me, that's, you know, that's really difficult because it's, it's hard. There's a lot of hard things, but I would say the patience for sure um, the financial aspect is hard and for us, uh, you know, is finding a balance, a, a work-life balance, if you will, because you want to get it done. Like you said, patience of getting it done, but then you have all this other stuff, you know, working and life and friendships and relationships and just keeping a healthy mindset. So finding a good balance was definitely is still, it definitely is just a challenge. Yeah. yeah. I think for, choose for to us, uh, what was oh. that, Randy? You have to what wake up Randy? in the morning and choose to be happy and let all that other stuff go. Right. Choose yeah. to be happy. Yeah, it have that positive choice. attitude. Make it one, job, happy, one happy job today. Our kind of slogan is we take it one day at a time. Everybody's like, well, when is the bus? I mean, you, you guys probably all, always get answered Absolutely. this. Yeah. When is the bus going to be done? And we're like, we don't have a timeline. We <laughs> well, that I'm not. So, so say never. Never. It will never be done. <laughs> it's like we take it one day at a time, man. You don't see us anymore. Then yeah. it's done. <laughs> we don't yeah. see us because yeah. we gone by. Well, we just <laughs> the there. There we go. We keep we keep it. It. What were you saying, Brian, about y'all's challenge? Oh, I think for, well, we both have different challenges. For me, <laughs> the whole building part's not, like there's, there's, there's problems and there's solutions. I try not to focus on problems, but how do we get to the solution so that it actually works? Like that could be mentally racking, but for me, the biggest like mind bender was the electrical system. 
like we've only put in our 110 wiring and stuff up to the sub panel and we're going to be getting to the solar aspect of it with the charge controller and the inverter and the solar panels and stuff um, we already have everything we just haven't gone and started <laughs> putting it all together yeah. but like watching marathon paco's videos holy smokes that helps so much yeah. just the way that paco methodically put it all together and explained what things do yeah. i'm like now i watched him again the other day and i was all like oh it's already starting to click this stuff <laughs> like how it all flows together this is great yeah. and then calling randy that one day yeah randy also when we called you guys um yeah. we talked yeah. to randy about your electrical too that with the bx so much much like we're really lucky to have the community that electrical thing is touchy because uh we got solar charge controller the inverter the multi plus inverter all that stuff the battery bank i cautious about sharing how we did it or what we did because uh, i don't want somebody to misinterpret and do it the wrong way and burn up a right whatever four or five thousand dollar piece of stuff because yeah. yeah. well randy did that but i i i got a uh consultant i got uh ryan no uh, aaron, aaron aaron, aaron bockley i got aaron bockley to consult with me on how to hook that stuff up it how was, to hook our solar up it was painful and then when it was completed it wasn't doing what it was supposed to and that's when battleborn was awesome because i called battleborn and said this is what it's doing they said do this, this, and this, and call us back tomorrow and write down what it does. So I did. And so two rounds of that and everything's working, but that electrical thing, the whole grounding issue, what is ground, what's an earth ground, all that crap, it right. gets people all fired up. And oh, then the engineers get all fired up and holy <laughs> when, you, when you try to talk to an electrician, I mean, we had two different guys come to the shop and we got different stories because just because they're, they're thinking to, homes they're used to building a house yeah that's you know that's already grounded a bus is totally different so yeah it's yeah, tough. yeah. it is a tough one tough. yeah cat and cam oh well you know i guess you know i i think that i agree with meredith on you know just the patience and the financials as well but i think personally i don't know about cameron one of my biggest things has really become getting comfortable driving the bus because that has been it scared the living crap out of me for a little bit, you know, when we first got it and everything, but um, we're kind of handling that right now, but <laughs> gotten a little bit more comfortable with that. Huh? Tell us your solution for the Oh yeah, the um, I actually, uh, <laughs> um, I have started doing training to become a substitute bus driver for the school district in my area. And so um, I got I got my written CDL and uh, I've been doing all the training for free. So I got to drive a 40 foot bluebird around and practice all that stuff and get wow. used to all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's smart. You're smart. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun too. It's actually really fun. So you're gonna look like an ass when you quit though. <laughs> Three sure. drivers are done. Good thing it's just substitute. Yeah. School's not even going on anymore, so I don't who cares. I don't know why they're hiring. Well, whatever. Well, yeah, basically been getting paid to learn how to drive a school bus. So I've uh kind of tackled that issue, but I don't know if Cameron, is there anything else that you for what? Oh, just patience. I'm not very patient. Cameron's the least patient person yeah, I know. I I'll throw something and I'm like, give me four months. I'm like, <laughs> I hate it when tools don't work though. So we got Cameron a whole new uh, uh -huh. set of Makita drills for Christmas. So he oh, has I got something that works now. Yeah. So. We had two drills go out in one day. <laughs> one day, two drills. <laughs> That's not a good, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> it's like, this won't even go through the wood. <laughs> <laughs> not fun. Yep. I think my biggest challenge with this whole thing is like, well, everything you guys said, like it's like really an emotional battle to like 
I don't know, stay happy, stay positive, be patient, all those things. One of the things that drives me crazy is not feeling like I know what I'm doing or that I'm strong enough or capable enough to help him. Like it drives me nuts when I feel like I can't help him. I want to be in there. I want to be doing stuff. I'm super creative. We're just not to those projects yet. And the stuff that I feel like I can really excel in is just like a grasp away, but it's like, it's always like, oh, we got to do something with metal again. Come on. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like boring. Electricity's boring. Like all these things. And then I'm just like, you know what? Chill out because this whole thing is really freaking cool. I will come. It's coming, it's coming. The design aspect, all the things that just make me feel so good and warm inside, like it's coming. Um, but it's reminding myself that like, we're really like, we put ourselves in a position to be able to do this. And that's exciting in itself. And it's exciting to get to learn something new. Oh, gosh. Bring me to our next Next our doorbell just rang, so our dog's going crazy. One second. Oh. <laughs> Next question. What are you the most proud of that you've learned so far or that you've created so far? Who wants to start? That's a good one. Hmm. Randy. Yo, someone asked that. Uh, Joel. Joel Ducharme. Our Canadian friend. Uh, I know. I, I think uh, you guys got one. One thing that that I love in our bus that is functioning better than I hoped for is our drop down table, and um, because of what we used to do, we used to be kaleidoscope artists. So we would always use all this really cool, high quality wood for kaleidoscopes and then they would go out and we never got to use the wood in our own home environment. And so we kind of saved some of the wood for the bus. And so now we have a beautiful maple table that, um, that we sit at every day and, and, but we can drop it down and enlarge the living room. And so that's working out way better than I ever hoped for. But you, you mean the skill that I've learned that I'm the most proud of through the process? It could be a skill. It could also be what you created. Uh, the, the solar system and all that stuff, learning how that worked. And because I worked with uh, Aaron Bacali, I know that, you know, you can buy the combiner box and hook the wires up, but there's a one-way diode. There's a fuse. There's a lightning arrestor. I didn't understand that stuff. And so... Aaron took me from the solar panels all the way through everything. Now that's the thing I'm the most proud that I understand now. I can look at the little thing on the phone and go, look, it's it's taking them out of the batteries and it's making it back into 110 and the, the and heater using, takes 600 watts. Much, yeah. Well, the other thing yeah. too that I love, that I'm proud about him for is he knows every element of this bus and how it works. You know, every yeah. everything that we put into but, it, he knows which he wasn't an engine guy before and he didn't do electric. I don't before. like mechan the blunder is we blundered to put a block heater in. We struggled to get the block heater. We had trouble getting it. We got it. Didn't go in the hole that the bus mechanic told us it went in, showed him a picture. He said, that is the block heater. It just has the wires off. Well, we pull it out to shove the block heater in there and it's a sensor. It's not the block heater. So then we had to find, there's antifreeze all over the place. We had to find the hole that it went in, put it in the right hole. All said and done, two or three gallons of antifreeze to clean up. But the funniest thing is the engine had a heater on the top called the grid heater. And I didn't even need the block heater. It already had a grid <laughs> heater. That, it started at 13 degrees the other day. Yeah, with the grid heater. Without, yeah, like, without the block heater, she started right up at 13 degrees. Well, it's a little bit slower, but yeah. I'm like, Fahrenheit. we didn't even need it. So, yeah, so that's a funny one. <laughs> if you want to look, at you, the grid heater, look on the top of your motor, man, if there's two big battery cables coming up there, that's a grid heater. <laughs> We didn't have that, did we? No, we didn't right. have that. 
<laughs> I don't know. Cat and Cam, what are y'all proud of so far? Learning or building? Um, I'd say uh, I've learned a lot of really cool skills. Uh, I've learned that I'm kind of a beast with a rivet gun. She loves so the rivet gun. I love the rivet gun. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, rivet gun. <laughs> rivet for life. <laughs> <laughs> Rivets aren't cheap either. No, no they're not. <laughs> they're like the most expensive fastener. But they're fun fasteners. More than the metal by far. But um, I think, you know, so far as everything that we've done on the bus, I'm, I mean, I'm personally kind of proud of myself for the demo part. Uh, I think that I didn't think that I was going to be able to go in there with a the crowbar and we were going to be able to just, just rip everything up. And I was just kind of a kind of going ham sandwich on all the demolition though so we got that done pretty quick but um you know I I'm just really proud of really kind of Cameron for really stepping up and really you know being as patient as he can with me with showing me how to uh, yeah, do that's, certain that's things because like she doesn't know anything no yeah. but, <laughs> but she does now yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a I'm not the best teacher I'm not gonna lie no no <laughs> But no, I think that's, I think, I think, I don't know. The biggest thing is uh, maybe it's just making the step to actually get the bus and then do something, you know, and yeah, then you're like, buses. hey, this is actually happening. Then you have to be proud of yourself for that reason. I think we were more scared and excited to sign the title for the bus when we bought it than we were for the house. Yep. Almost. Because I was like, we are really doing this. Okay. Yeah. I guess like, we're oh. doing this. <laughs> like, what? what the hell are we doing? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, taking that yeah, plunge and not having faith. Is yes, that, it's a little <laughs> crazy. <Yeah>. That's huge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Better yeah. than Paco. What have you learned or created? Proud of. Um, proud. We're talking about proud of. Yeah. I, yeah, proud of. Um, for, for both of us, proud of us for is exactly what you just said, is actually doing it, taking the leap, getting the bus, and just just going for it. There's so much more that matters after that, but that is probably the biggest, most important step because you have to actually get a bus and go for it and do it. And that's the fact that we did that and made that big of a decision, a decision together, I think is something to be really proud of. Um, and individually, I'm trying to decide between the bed and the deck because the bed was the first project I did all by myself. And I did it when he wasn't there. I moved those huge pieces of plywood. I came up with the plans. I leveled everything. You know, I, I, I actually did that part on my own. And that was the first thing I had done on my own. So that's something I think really, really proud of. But the deck was a huge pain in my butt and took forever, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I get any chance I can to go up there and I I just, I love it. So I'm really proud of myself for doing the deck too, so. Cool. Nice. Paco, what are you uh, proud of? agree with what she said. Uh, so first, really proud of her for doing the bed and the deck. Uh, oh, and the couch. And the couch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> and, and there's some more stuff that you guys haven't seen yet that she's done by herself uh, that looks amazing. Uh, well, you guys will see that later. Now, so. <laughs> oh. Oh. So all, all those things, I'm really proud of her before. Um, not that I don't think that she could do them, but me being the kind of person that I am, I always want to be there just, just to make sure that things go well, just to, um, I'm also a bit of a perfectionist. So I want to make sure that like, that we use the, the square and that, that we take measurements and we don't just go straight for it. But she, she did an awesome job at, at, at everything. Um, I, love it. <laughs> I think for, for myself, for myself, it has to be the, the electrical closet, just learning every single aspect of the electrical. Um, that, that was very daunting at first, but once you know it, you feel really good about it because people will ask us questions 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, you just have to do this, this, and this. Or she'll be at the bus doing something on the bus. And so, well, this isn't working. We'll say, well, check this, check that, check this, check that. And she'll, she'll, okay, well, she'll space time with me. And, okay, well, make sure this is going on. Make sure this is, uh, what is, what is the app reading? And I'm able to work with her. And then whenever, if I ever do need to t- talk to people like, um, like Battleborn, I don't just get deer in a headless kind of look whenever they talk to me. I understand what they're saying and I'm able to execute the things that they're saying and actually have conversations with them about it that are productive towards my, my, my issues. So I think that has to be what I am more person, most personally uh, proud of myself. For, yeah, yeah. For myself. yeah and, my, and my question that you said to, to have prepared for everybody uh, was that it's just like, what is something that your partner has done that has just, really surprised you or that you've learned or seen them do that you're like, wow, you know, I, you know, I didn't know this about you or I didn't know you could do that. And you guys pretty much answered it in this, you know, uh, question along with it. But that's definitely one of the things that I would say about him that just blew me away that he figured it all out, that it works, that it's, you know, like he said, it's not that I didn't think he could do it, but actually doing it is something different than being like, yeah, if you put your mind to it, you could do that. But he did it and it's amazing. And I don't get it. But he does, so <laughs> that's all. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll handle this, some other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, over here, like I am just in awe at her design abilities and conceptualization of spaces. So she has this green moleskin book that she does sketches of of oh. spaces that don't exist yet but she'll sit there and she's like oh i'm gonna sketch up this space and she does perspective on it and like makes it and i can see it and as she's doing that when she shows me a finished picture here's what i'm thinking i'm like okay here's how we could build that and the ones that have really freaking screwed me up in my head was the curved shower and trying to figure that one out because the wall was curved but it came down at a, at, a, at a corkscrew angle also. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never done anything like this. So like being able to take her vision and she be able to communicate it to me and then me bringing my background of building and stuff and be able to say, okay, this is how we can do that. Here's the materials that we can potentially use and knowing who we can call to say, hey, this is our idea. This is what we're wanting to do. What is this stuff called that that could potentially do this? And uh, so like being resourceful and being able to to reach out and ask questions to Mm -hmm. uh, to dealers and companies and stuff like that. Trades guys. Yeah, trades guys also. So. Mm -hmm. I think I'm really proud of our communication together. Oh, I yeah. feel like our communication is going through the roof. Yeah. Like if we've learned anything, it's how to talk to each other. And yes, yeah, sometimes we're still jerks to each other. But when that's happening, we know how to handle it instead of like freaking out. We, you know, give each other space or we know what kinds of questions to ask. And I think we, I don't know if we would have got there so fast if we hadn't done this build together. So that's been pretty cool. But Brian amazes me every day with how he handles tools and how he, how much he knows about this stuff and how resourceful he is and how damn strong he is. Like the stuff that he does is really amazing to me. Um, And then what I'm proud of myself about is just like learning tools and feeling more confident with them. And I feel like we were talking about this the other day that we just feel smarter and smarter all the time. And (laughs) this project is pushing us to be smarter. Like my math, (laughs) I was the worst at math and I tease him about being the math man, but like my math is getting better. So I don't know. I, I feel like all in all, this is forcing us to stretch and grow, no matter how hard or challenging it is. And, you know, there are days when we want to quit like that underbody. Um, it's been cold and working under the bus in the cold and you're freezing with metal and metal has no love. Um, yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> tough, but I don't know. It's cool. It's it'll really cool. It'll, it'll, be it'll, be it'll be worth it in the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys showed us. Show, led the way. Yeah. 
<laughs> so grateful. Sorry, my, <laughs> yes. my apologies. Actually, that was the guys here at the shop's fault. They were the one from day one. They're like, you have to put an underbay in. And Randy's like, no, I don't. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Someone asked, oh, Rico asked everyone, how has converting the bus affected your relationships with each other? <laughs> oh, gosh. Should we go there? <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> like that. No, that, uh, that was something that I was actually going to, because you kind of touched on that, Aaron. It's like, that's the one thing that we have learned is through the whole time of doing this is to know where each other is at. You know, we kind of every morning, you know, I ask him, okay, so what's the game plan today? And there are, like you said, there's some things where I can't help him on. And we're, we're constantly working in a fabrication shop. So there's stuff going on in the shop that I necessarily don't want to be in there and be around or just the noise and stuff, or, or there's not room for me to be in there. So we kind of, every day we talk about, you know, what is our intention for the day? What, what are we setting out to do? So it's learning to communicate with each other and be on the same page. I think it's huge. Yeah, but one, one of the challenges of it is she's all like, okay, what's the focus tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll tell you in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We literally I one got, day. There's, there's, there's like three things up in the air. You know, the guy that's going to help me with the toe hitch, he might call and blah, 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 blah. And so I just, I, I don't tell you in the morning when it takes off. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> because she, yeah. She yeah wants to I'm know. in limbo, you know, not oh, knowing yeah. how to plan my day. So, or plan, you know, my week. So it's like, okay, you yeah. know, so learning to do it. And, and, and I think the hardest what thing she, was learning what, to take it one day at a time. No, we've been married 43 years. Yeah. And what we've always done is we take long walks together. Yeah. And then we can decompress and we can understand where each other's at. What are you worried about? What are you worried about? And then help each other through those. And that's very helpful. It is. Us. Yeah. We really, and we, we try not to take cell phones or anything. So nothing can interrupt that walk. <laughs> so. Sounds like, sounds like you guys need a tub. Sounds like what? Sounds like you guys need a tub. I <laughs> soaking tub. You couldn't even get a Japanese soaking tub. Yeah. No, that's hot springs before, but that starts with hot springs, man. Uh, yeah. You can put one in your truck bed. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> And we're gonna have Mary yeah, and Kevin put one up on their deck, and we'll go and visit them. Yeah, come on by. <laughs> They're infl your inflatable, inflatable one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a that's Walk a good idea. <laughs> when we get that caterpillar going, we'll get a a pool up there. Cam <laughs> <laughs> and Cat, how has this affected your relationship so far? Oh, well, I think, you know, it, it patience. Yeah, pa well, I know overall has <laughs> been, a, it's, it's affected us in a, in a good way. Um, you know, we've heard, we've learned to have a lot of patience with each other. Um, you know, luckily, so we actually have our bus parked out in front of our house. Um, we have really cool neighbors and it's been there for like, you know, since we bought it. So just over six months now, but, um, you know, we'll be out there and especially in the summertime, we have all the windows open and we're screaming at each other, you know? We're just like, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to be over here. And I'm pretty sure our neighbors think we're a little bit crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, you know, especially- you thought, you thought Aaron was bad last last week's video. <laughs> <laughs> and her mom's just like, I better go That's inside. Very, very. <laughs> like, but funny. yeah, no, I think, yeah, you know, it's fun. just, I think it's really, you know, it's, it's taught us kind of where, where each other's buttons are and being able to not press those as much because sometimes you just need a breather and you need five minutes and I know when he needs five minutes just to just to okay okay let's come back let's let's break come back in a little bit and then get it done or you or you might need a snack you know you need to eat some food sometimes you know someone's just a little hangry <laughs> just need a snack <laughs> so but you know definitely just patience and then yeah just kind of just being on the same wavelength with each other has kind of really been taught us that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Definitely. Cool. 
Don't go hungry. What about you? Sorry? Yeah, no hangry. (laughs) How has this affected your relationship? Um, Ask Rico. That is a tough question because for me, I would say it's about 50 50. We have been together for a really long time, so we already know where each other's buttons are. We already we already know all that stuff. That's stuff you, we just kind of have on hand for when you need it, you know? When you need it. <laughs> annoying today, and I know what to do. But I think that some aspects, like you guys said, with communication, that's something we've always struggled with. I don't know if it's a language barrier. We just think completely differently, but we've always had each, we, we've always had problems uh, being on the same page. And I don't know that we have gotten better at knowing exactly what the other person means, but I think we've gotten better at knowing how to get there, how to mm. understand them, what questions to ask, you know, how to understand them better or when to just, you know, take a step back and be like, okay, I don't quite get it, but I'm going to let you walk me through it along the way and I'm going to do the best I can. But then the days or the weeks or the months that you don't find a good balance, you know, if you're working on a really tough project, you know, it's, there's things going on in real life and in bus life and, and everything's piling up it'll kind of magnify the things that were already there or issues that, you know, we already have, you know, in our relationship, everybody has, you know, little ticks here and there, it'll magnify those. So I think it's been a little bit of both. We have found ways to strengthen ourselves and take the time and learn more about one another and see a different side of one another because you're in a totally different position. A to- Thank you, Joe. Thank you. A totally different, you know, aspect, but it's also when you don't find the balance and you don't take the time, it can magnify those other things. And that's just uh, with everything else, it's a learning process. You know, it's like when people get married, buy a house, start a new job and have a kid, right? All at the same time, you're going to learn a lot about the other person. You're going to, the problems that you do have are going to magnify and you have to end up on the other side together. So it's just finding the right path to end up on the other side together, being stronger on the other side of it. So a little bit of both. I mean, people ask us this question actually quite a bit because it is testing. Joey. (laughs) (laughs) He's having a party over here. He's brought me like four toys. Um, (laughs) So people ask us that question a lot. And I, I, I am going to, you know, I'm going to try to tell them the truth because I don't want to mislead them that it is going to test you. It's going to be hard. And some people might not be able to make it to the other side with this, but I'm not going to, you know, tell them that I'm just going to say that it is hard. It is going to test you, but any big life changes are, it's going to test you personally and your relationship. So you just have to be willing to take it on. Yeah. You got to have, what I've learned is I, you got to have faith in each other. Like, mm-hmm. like there's times when I just, I just have to say, okay, Randy, I know you've got this. I, I have faith in you go for it. I support you, you know, and just do it, get it done. Something that, that we have gotten better at throughout our relationship is that um, we, whenever one of us starts freaking out or starts stressing out, the other person is the one to kind of keep a more cool level headed kind of just calm us down or bring us down back to earth and and vice versa and i think that has helped out a lot because sometimes there's times where i am trying to find out how to diy something something in particular and i'm just trying everything i can and it's not going the way i want it to and i'm stressing and i'm getting mad and i am i'm everything's going on in my mind and, and she's just okay well well, how about we try this? How about we try that? How about we just step away for a second? And and she knows me better than I know myself sometimes. So she she's able to to say, okay, well, just work on this for right now. And and if something comes up, then it's great. And sometimes thing, little things like that will be like, okay, I'm working on this, but I'm still thinking about that. Like, okay, well, maybe I can try that on that project uh, and, and vice versa as well. People have no idea how much filming that at the same time, how much more pressure that puts 
on the relationship mm. because you may not be, everybody has their crappy days and you have them already. And then you add a really tough project going on or something that's not going right. And you want to be honest with them because you want people to know that, but you also don't want people to see, you know, just a really angry, upset video. So you try to be positive and be like, you guys can do it because we can do it. And then you turn the camera off and you're like, oh my God, are we done with plumbing yet? What's up, YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we get that. There is definitely added pressure with the videos, especially we're always late. Always. We try to get them out on time, but it's like we're just trying to keep up with life and all the, all the things. And there's more, there's more things than just the bus going on. So right, right. Um, oh, yeah, trying to bring out the twinkly happy face is sometimes really challenging. And like you saw in our last video, I was dying. I was dying laughing. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I was like, that's Aaron. Look. <laughs> that was the edited version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Oh my God. Randy <laughs> oh will always stay and then he'll, he'll say stuff and he'll go, well, you guys aren't going to hear this. She's going to edit that out. <laughs> Yeah. Mother, <laughs> doing the goose honk honk. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, even honk, I didn't honk anything this last one, and whenever I did honk, it was after it was said. <laughs> I cringe when he edits. Like I'm like, oh god, like it turns out good, but he always leaves those embarrassing things in. I'm like really, it's the human oh, factor man. though, because like people. Makes it people real. view your relationship, wh what you show on right. film. They're like, okay, that's how they are like in real life. But there's so much, there's hours and days and days more stuff that's not even shown in videos. Like mm -hmm. trying to keep it short and cut it. Like we were getting up to the point where we're almost an hour long on our videos and we scratched our head one day. We're like, oh, shoot, we need to rein this back in and bring them back down to 20 or 30 minutes long. So it's like <laughs> trying to find the happy medium because there's so much more that could be shown. But it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, no one wants to just sit there and just watch every freaking second because a lot of times we're just sitting there just talking back and forth with sketch pads, trying to figure, doing calculations <laughs> and stuff. And it's a lot of boring shit and people don't really want to watch that. They want to get to the action. Cut to the chase. <laughs> I pro. I pro. That's the best. Um, someone asked where we're most excited uh, to travel to, but I would like to take that question a little bit deeper and ask, what does your life look like once you're full time in the bus? We're like gonna ideally, ideally, without like worries about dumb shit. Like, what do you really want from this? So, um, because we were born and raised here where we're at, this is going to be home base, and our oldest son lives here, and our family's all here. So, Ontario, Eastern Oregon will be home base, but we lived for 21 years on the Oregon coast, so that's also home, and so, um we want to definitely spend more time back on the Oregon coast because I'm already missing it. And then um, we're going to spend a lot of time down in Arizona. Um, we have a lot of connections and we're kind of blessed with our, um, with our kaleidoscope life. We have friends all over the United States. And so we've been invited to go. We have this network of family everywhere. So, and then we want to just, we want to just see nature. We want to see, um, you know, all of the, the national parks and, and if you see us in an RV park, something yeah. went wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, is not, that is not where we want to be. No. We walked, we could go down to the port on the coast and walk a loop and it was through an RV park. Yeah. And they're six feet apart from each other. You could barely walk between them. And I'm like, 
That is we're, not the life we're I We're nature, choose. man. You want <laughs> You want black sky with yeah. stars, and you look up and you can see the stars. No. <laughs> Yeah, we want to experience nature in its fullest and and just, you know, embrace what Mother Earth has to offer us. And so that's where we're looking to go. We're looking to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Of there. <laughs> I want out now. <laughs> Yesterday. Yeah. More well, like we, had, we had a taste of it. You know, we just had five days up on the river boondocking and we're like, wow. This is really what life is going to be like, man. I want it. You know, how soon can we get out of here? But yeah, no. pretty exciting. So yeah. that's how. That's a um, that's cool. Nice. <laughs> we're going to go to Oregon. Yeah, we're buying land in Oregon. <laughs> we're going to go to Oregon. Where at? We're at? We're at in Oregon. Uh, we don't know yet. We just like Depot Bay around that whole area. But we'll probably be buying yeah, land more in. Uh, more like probably eastern inland. inland eastern oregon probably just because the coast is really expensive but not, i mean not eastern but well, not yeah. eastern but yeah <laughs> somewhere yeah. in the middle yeah but um you know other than that i mean ideally i guess you know buy land in oregon and then in um island park idaho as well that's where we got married um gorgeous up there it's up by yellowstone but I mean, we'll probably, you know, probably end up spending a lot of time boondocking, traveling around uh, more of the West Coast, I'd say. I mean, we'll probably go down south a little bit, but I think that, you know, we'll probably end up staying more on the West Coast. Probably, I'd like to go up through Canada one of these days as well. Yeah. But um, two, uh, we kind of plan on probably spending at least a few months out of the year in Thailand as well, probably just during, you know, the winter months. Uh, and probably coming back. I mean, in the perfect world, that's what we'd like to do. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of just be able to travel and just kind of do what we want. Just like what, you know, you guys said, you know, just being able to be out by the river underneath the stars, you know, with no one around and maybe buy some hot springs would be the best thing, but. <laughs> Can you dip in? <laughs> just need to get rid of our dogs and our cat. <laughs> We can't get rid of the dog and the cat. We're coming back. We're silly friends with you. They're, they're a pain in the ass. You they, love they, them. They test my patience. <laughs> no, they're, they're good. They're good. Huh? Is it apparently everything does? Everything podcast. <laughs> everything. He's a really nice guy. You're my grandpa was from New Jersey, you know? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paco. That's, for me, that's a, that's, there's an easy answer and then there's a, you know, a more detailed answer. I'll say, I'll say the easy answer. Okay. Uh, the first place we'll go is out of the driveway. Mm. That's the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. easy answer. That, that's, I don't know how far we'll get past there, but we're going to go out of the driveway. <laughs> that's for sure. You haven't seen my papa's driveway. It's got a lot of potholes. So. <laughs> um, it's the beach or anywhere with water. That's where I want to be. I want to be somewhere by the beach or somewhere by water. And that's just makes me happy walking out, hearing waves or hearing water. I love it. Um, the more detailed answer I think is that we don't, we don't have an exact plan. We don't know what it looks like, but our plan is finding out, finding out what makes us happy, what, you know, who we are as individuals, who we are together, what a day-to-day -day looks like that we both just absolutely love. You know, experimenting with that, seeing, you know, what place we stop at that we're like, this is amazing. We either, you know, could stay here for a little bit, learn some stuff or, find more places similar to this and just figuring it out I think is what what we're looking forward to and we don't know what that looks like exactly but you know that's the exciting and scary part about it but it gives us the opportunity to do that and I think that's the best part so I completely agree where's the first place you'd want to go I, I wasn't kidding out of the driveway <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can honestly say when we took our first trip and we pulled off of the you know when I actually got to follow him in the pickup because I mean the, we're not towing yet but to see us actually pull away out of the shop and we were going to a destination I was like yes yes we've made it so it, I mean, it is like, very cool I feel feeling. like it'll be similar whenever we actually 
bought the bus. We both left the driveway and we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then we turned on the highway and we were both like, crap yeah what are we doing <laughs> so i feel like it'll be a little bit like that it'll be so exciting and then a little bit of like immediate panic of what now <laughs> oh, I, I can share with you what we've been doing now that the bus is more mobile and stuff we do sunday drives okay, we'll cool. pick the day and then we just drive so like you know i'll challenge him and that way i can ride in the bus with him and see how it's working and what and what's working and, and not working uh, as a, far as a passenger but I'll challenge you and say, okay, now you've conquered this town. Let's go to the next town and, you know, and we'll make a loop or something. And, and the big thing was I, I made him go into a parking lot at a grocery store and he's like, you want me to do what? <laughs> and so he had to pull in and park the bus because that's what you're going to do. So that has been really good for both of us to learn how to back the bus out and, and, Move it, maneuver it. That's so smart. Sunday drives can be nice. That's a good idea. Well, we we found out like uh, we have the passenger seat in here, and oh, when we were boondocking, I said let's drive the bus back down to the hot springs instead of taking the pickup. So we did, and then she's riding in the seat going. Oh, this is a my little, new seat is too high. It's too high. I'm looking <laughs> out the top of the windshield, and we thought when we put it in, we were sitting here, and I was just sitting in it. You know, the bus wasn't moving, but and I, <laughs> think, oh, it'll be okay. I can, you know, scrunch down, and we we got back to the shop, and yeah, that video's gone. You know, the seat is <laughs> gone. No new video, but the seat works. That's what's important. Yeah. <laughs> I think for us, like ideally, we're going to start our research project, which is looking for homesteaders who are doing the homestead thing. We want to have a homestead. That's like, if we could have had a homestead a year ago, like we kind of wish that we had done that, but then we're like, ah, oh, the bus. So because we both really love traveling, but with all this craziness in the world, we were like, shit, we should have got a homestead. Um, and just done that. But we really want to travel. We want to explore and meet people who are homesteading and learn from people who are doing it, just like we learned from people who are doing it on YouTube with the bus. Yeah. I think that our best teachers are other people who have done it. Um, so research project for us. And I don't know where we'll go first, but whoever will have us and then boondocking like crazy. Totally crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know anything else about that? No, that pretty much yeah. covers that. And um, I want to add to that though, for one small second, someone in the comments asked about, will all of us still be doing YouTube once the buses are finished? And for us, <laughs> yes, absolutely. YouTube, you know, putting up videos, as long as YouTube doesn't close down our, our channel, you know. First up. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, Aaron's dirty language yeah. on there. You never know. We always, we always put his light profanity in there, but not in the title or first 30 seconds. Yeah. So we select that option and we've been pretty good with that. But yeah, we, we definitely want to continue doing YouTube. Uh, we were both, we both love to cook so much. So we're going to have a cooking segment, like a traveling cooking segment where we travel different places and cook in the kitchen and out here, in, out, inside, outside. Craft time. Craft time. Um, and also like probably canning and foraging and hunting and yeah. stuff like that. Just being wildlings. And then eventually <laughs> Uh, find land that we want to homestead on like we're going to record that whole journey as well because we're planning on living in the bus while we build the homestead and everything and then whenever we do have an earth ship or like some cob house or something really cool that we build ourselves then we, we might use the schoolie as either a, a, a trip vehicle to head out and go on trips with or even Airbnb it because people love to stay in really cool places. So that could be another source of income for the homestead. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah. Is everybody else plan on uh, YouTube in after? Yeah, we're, we plan on doing like a travel, travel blog you know, just sharing where we're going and what life is like living on a bus or living in a bus, you know? Yeah, it's like, can, can you pee in a composting toilet standing up yet? 
Yeah. It's a three quarter inch hole. I can do it. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. You know, just what it's like to live in a bus, you know, the day to day life stuff. So that's what we plan on doing and where and where we go. So we enjoy that's cool. I, I mean, our whole thing about this has been sharing the journey. So to us, when the when the conversion is done, the journey is still going on. That's just the first phase of this journey that we're on. So. Definitely. Yeah, we, we definitely plan on uh, continuing doing videos. Before we did bus build videos, we did travel videos. So we would like to get back to that because we found really quickly that with bus build videos, they start to get really repetitive and it's hard, especially when you're working on the same project for a really long time. It's hard to get creative with the video. It's hard to change it up. It's hard to make it look interesting. And you're like, yeah, this is a pipe. It was in the last video. I don't know what to tell you. This is all I got right now. But, you know, so getting to make videos other than that, getting different backgrounds, you know, different, you know, different adventures, showing people other places or showing people the possibilities. Um, and I also think that people who do continue to do uh, YouTube after their build, I think the videos they make are just as helpful as the actual build videos. I agree. So, I mean, like the number one bus has made some of the most helpful, insightful videos and they're, they help you with your build just as much as, you know, the other people who are still building. Cause they tell you like improvements they've made, things they wish they did differently, things that yeah. Yeah. are in the way or haven't helped or, you know, things that they've changed to make it more convenient and more effective. So some of those videos are you know, almost more helpful because you're like, oh, well, I was going to do this. And now I know these people that have been doing it know not to do that. So there's sure. times when we'll struggle or me personally, when I'll, I'll be struggling with the build and all of that. And I'll turn to those that are actually out on the road going, oh, yeah, this is a reminder of what I'm working towards. We're going to get out there. You know, there there is hope. I haven't lost it. You know, people are doing it. We can make it. So. So yeah, so to be that someday for somebody else, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Aww. Ryan has a way better mullet than Will though, so. Just <laughs> oh, <laughs> it out there. Throwing some shade. Fighting words. Stems be fighting words. <laughs> Calm rolling elbow. Rolling those bows. Okay, so can. Pat, you're on the other side of the spectrum. Like you've got a bit of YouTube action happening, but you're yeah. kind of choosing not to. I think well, you know what? You guys are all much better people than we are because we kind of decided that um, we're probably going to really start the YouTube journey kind of more once our bus is probably a little bit more finished. Maybe when we start even putting like the finishing touches. Well, we're not so much building too much anymore. Maybe just getting yeah. everything to look pretty because I just don't know. I, I I just don't know how good the videos would turn out because I mean I we just I, I don't think we'd be remembered to really explain anything that would make any sense. You'd be like filming, yeah. filming, and then just be like, oh well, we didn't explain anything because we got be, too caught up in it. Yeah. But um, you know, our our we're definitely gonna get more into it once we get out and start traveling. And kind of do that, you know. We like to cook as well, so we were even thinking about doing like a little schooly cooking. I just, thing, I but... just like doing giphy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, obviously, the other channel that we have is just stupid. It's all yeah. It's just silly <laughs> clip it's of nonsense. <laughs> I, mean, I think, I think the majority of people watch those videos. The after videos, the pretty videos, the yeah. tours, yeah. the life afterwards. Majority of people are here for that content. So, I mean. It's only people like us who are actually in it, doing the schoolies. Who are that watching are, the that, build. That, that want to watch well, I mean, and that's why, you know, I have, you know, big shout out to all, to you guys and, you yeah, know, Ryan know. and Aaron and you guys, I mean. I don't know. Well, I don't know what do. we would do without your guys' videos for or, sure. Or how, you know? you, or how you guys actually film everything while you're building it. I yeah. mean, I can't imagine that. No, you so. got, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> Part that's, out you guys, guys are crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> uh, hey. You guys are amazing. I mean, you guys have helped us out with so much. I mean, you know, Brian and Aaron, it's just, I, we, we love you guys to death. I mean, just 
anytime I have an issue is like, we'll reach wow. out to Brian and Aaron. And it's like, Brian gets back with me about like, it's like eight paragraphs. <laughs> He's like, it could be this, it could be that. Or you check this, here's a YouTube clip on that. I'm like, thanks, Brian. We got <laughs> so it's, just, it's, it's really helpful. That's something I love about them is that they're not only really informative and detailed, is that they're like that with everyone. It's mm -hmm. not like, oh, I know you, I'll take the time. It's like, no, they care enough to answer you fully. And a lot of times I'll just think of a question just to ask them because sometimes I'm just frustrated and I'm just having a shitty day. And yeah. just their energy that you guys put into your responses, no matter what kind of day you're having, can completely flip my day around. So sometimes it's not just for information. It's just just for a little uplift for sure, because having people like that is important. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't, don't you find too, it's great to, I mean, we're kind of isolated here. So until they, I mean, they're the first schoolie people we've even talked to. And we, as fun as it is, we've never even seen the inside of somebody else's school bus. So it's like, we, we did see a short bus just the, uh, just about a month ago, but we've never even seen a schoolie completed other than YouTube. But to know, to be able to talk to them and know that there's other people out there that are totally where you're at and get, I mean, you could talk to your friends in the band and your family, but they don't understand where we're at. Right. They have no what idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, whatever, you know, you can do it. Mom. It's like, you guys are going to go live in a bus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> actually my question to everyone else. Do your family, does your family think you're crazy? <laughs> yeah, somebody else that really totally gets you that you can talk to has just been wonderful so yeah and I love the whole concept yeah. of this because it's like I feel like I've just got two more sets of friends now so right. it's, it's <laughs> oh, so we. <laughs> oh, we love you guys it's the same on our end like we're so grateful to meet friends like you guys have all just been so amazing to bounce ideas off of or even just joke around when we need to joke around about something. It's been so beautiful and so nice. And then on top of it, you know, doing the premieres and stuff and doing lives and talking to people in the community and people, even just people saying like, you inspire me to do this is like, what? You guys watch our videos? Like it's, <laughs> yeah. well, send us pictures of their bus they're like we just went to triple a and told joe and tony that you guys sent us and they say hi back <laughs> like, <laughs> it's hi, <still> tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey tony and joe how's it going guys um or like they'll send us an email oh the the pre the pre pre-purchase visual inspection checklist that you had on your website like helped me to actually look at a bus and look at parts on it mm. not just like oh it's a big bus well like what are the different things to look at so it helps people like get more granular it's kind of like if you go house shopping for the first time and you're looking <laughs> for a house that's that's already been built it's got years under its belt and you go there if you don't know anything about anything you're going to be all like oh there's just this is a new thing that i'm looking at but if you have a little bit of experience with living in a house and looking at the floors and looking at the walls, looking for cracks, looking at, you know, window panes and, and looking at the shingles on the roof and the, or the roofing material and the eaves, like looking at all this stuff, then all of a sudden you're not just looking as a new person. You're looking at someone who I'm actually evaluating this piece of machinery or this house I'm not just going and saying, I'm going to go buy this because there's a lot of stuff under the surface. Mm -hmm. Once you pull up like the flooring, for instance, mm -hmm. that could just like have just terrible, mm -hmm. like corrosive rust and stuff. And there's, I got a deal. Yeah, I got this awesome deal. <laughs> awesome. I hope that you're a really good steel worker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's really cool to like hear people coming back and sending us pictures and sending us messages because like that's inspiring to me and, and Aaron also to keep going. putting content out that actually helps connect the dots because like when we got started we didn't know everything about it and we still don't know everything about it like we no, haven't we run our drains yet yeah no, so we just watched Nap time. And we were Paco. Paco. <laughs> and we were like, okay, they're one step ahead of 
That's awesome. Where are they at now? <laughs> I can't find it. Like, I can't follow a million channels. Yeah. Like, you guys are it. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked if we're all doing composting toilets. And then uh, I think let's while we're on the toilet thing, are we doing composting toilets? And could a wall mount toilet work in a bus? Like a urinal? Yeah. That's what I, I want. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna piss sitting down. I'll pee outside. <laughs> I told you to practice your aim. That's all you got to do. Oh. <laughs> Learn to aim. It's so long. Yeah. We do have oh, a toilet. We chose to go. We chose to go with the nature's head, and um, we, we had, no, we wanted to yeah, build. We wanted to build it. The Alulalu. We were gonna like, yeah, we could fabricate a toilet. We'll make it out of aluminum. We could put the paddles in there. La 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 la. But when it comes down to the reality to of time. you've got 80 things to build and you can buy the toilet and screw it to the floor, that was the win-win. And it was the kicker to get us to, into the bus. So I was like, I'll pay the money. I, I, you know, <laughs> I'll pay the bus. That nature's head is awesome, but yeah. that's a lot of money for that toilet. Yeah. I mean, it's You don't, awesome. you don't spend a thousand dollars for a bucket. Yeah, I know. but, like, but <laughs> what, we, what we did choose to do after using it two weeks is we diverted the urine into our gray tank because that is probably the hardest part is dumping the urine. And I don't care what people say. I Maybe Randy and I drink too much water, but I told him going in, I am not doing that. That's your job. <laughs> You know, so he's like, no problem, I can do it. Well, every two every two days he was having to dump. Day every day. Yeah, it was it. easier just to dump it. Well, every I think day. I think we're just gonna route it to a tank underneath. Yeah, and it's that's yeah. that. and and the urine is the, 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 the poo is is easy. So yeah, the poo part is easy. So and <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> um, hey Randy, no one likes to bragger. Yeah, I can type it from living in the bus. We usually have to dump our composting toilet, the, the poo part, about every two to three weeks. We, two weeks. About every two weeks, then you have to dump it. So and you those, don't put the toilet. We don't put the we toilet don't put paper the toilet, in there. Yeah. When you put the toilet paper in there, you're going to have to dump more more often because and what happens really? it's caught up on the the bars going around and it okay. stops it from turning <laughs> we learned that the <laughs> no. yeah the paddles so it's the turd tumbler Aaron knows that video. Things you I like that <laughs> on the leather blades <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, a like ninja blade with the sack <laughs> Really swirl it up. Just make sure you put the lid down when you hit the button. Because it Turn spins up. at 3,000 RPMs. <laughs> <laughs> you need a bigger blender. <laughs> it's a Vita blender. Vitamix. <laughs> when you can't crank the handle anymore, it really is time to do something. Yeah. And basically, the only issue, is she, she didn't even see it, though. I, I just changed it three or four days ago. And it went a week longer than normal. Well, then you can start having some mold in there. It gets that, too much moisture. It's too much moisture too and much too much, much in up. there. Yeah, and the compost can't break it. And, and the peat moss. Don't leave your peat moss outside because it's moist and it's a freaking frozen out there. I go to get peat moss and it's like <laughs> a big of ice. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you serious? I have to go thaw the peat moss off before I can refill the toilet. <laughs> But well, that drink. part is that part's easy. Yeah. And once we diverted the urine into the gray tanks, it, I will say it was a little challenging to learn how to use it at first. Um, and now I, I tell my granddaughters it's funny. I because we don't put the toilet paper in there. Now when I use a normal toilet, I go, oh yeah, I can just put the toilet paper down here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's a bus girl because oh, yeah, she's yeah. number two. So, yeah, so our, our, we've got our two granddaughters <laughs> live here locally, and they were just here uh, last night. And our youngest one, who's nine, she came out and she goes, Grammy, Grammy, I went number two and I'm a bus girl now. <laughs> 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 
which <laughs> remember to open the trap door and how to use it properly. Oh, yeah, so. that, is a, that is a reality. I did forget that one morning. That's not cool. That's not good. So, so yeah, we're totally compost. We knew that going in. That's because we didn't want to deal with a black tank. We just wanted to have gray tanks. So. That's smart. How about you guys, Marathon Paco, composting toilet? Yes. Yeah, my uh, my parents have had an RV and have done RV trips for a couple years now. So we got to experience the joy of a black water tank. And uh, I just kind of got to sit and laugh at my dad um, because he got to use the hose and the whole thing and the smell and the... You know, my dad tried to make a rule where there's like no number two in the RV. And I'm like, what is your problem? And he's like, no, you can use the RV bathroom for that. No number two in the RV. Because after the first time, he was like, never again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely are going to go composting. Um, we do plan on routing the pee to the uh, gray water tank um, because we've seen people uh, have to empty that out. And just the seeing the tank full, it's like, okay i don't want to do that and the people who were like oh and then it overflowed and we had to clean out the whole bath i was like no 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 but i mean i have my mom has made it very clear that if we do have a composting toilet she will not be visiting so <laughs> she said i will be going somewhere else i'll park next to you and i'll go in mine and then i'll just come say hi so <laughs> One more person fill in the bucket, I guess. <laughs> right? She won't be signing the poop book. No. Yeah. <laughs> unless it's a cannon cannon. a poop. What? So unless she ends up having an emergency, then we'll see who does it. Yeah. It, 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 it really is funny how people are kind of put off by it because... You know, I mean, our grandkids are the only ones that have ever used our toilets. I mean, they're not afraid of it, but our our son and daughter-in-laws, man, nah, they wait. Can we go in the shop? Can we use a normal toilet? <laughs> so. By all means. <laughs> <laughs> I go for it. <laughs> Cam and Dad, are y'all going to have a composting toilet? Yeah, um, I think we're just going to build our own composting toilet and then uh, route the urine down to a uh, gray tank pretty much. So yep. that's the plan. Cool. I no thousand dollar buckets. <laughs> Sorry. What was yeah. that? He said no thousand dollar buckets for us. So no. that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's insanity. <laughs> well, hey, you never know. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're just going to build our own. Um, yeah, just do it that way. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. People no, no were black, asking, no black thing. No black thing. About, uh, holding urine in freshwater tanks. And so I did some research and found a scientific paper talking about HDPE, which is high density polyethylene, which a lot of the freshwater that are BPA free are made of that. And urine is one of the chemicals that is resistant. HDPE is resistant to. So Everybody using the Rec Pro 100 gallon tanks or those whitish color tanks are all good to go for urine. Okay, so to yeah. all the people okay. that, to all I thought we were just going to dump it on the road. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you so, just have like, a, uh, like by the driver's seat, you just pull up the thing and then just drain it. <laughs> okay. so, just a hold to the road. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be behind him, right? <laughs> what they do in Europe? <laughs> um, up the <laughs> if it's in Europe, a lot of streets smell like pee. No, I mean that's why uh, yeah. the van people. It's all the van lights. <laughs> the van people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of people in group when we were talking about our composting toilet there was this one guy in the group who mentioned oh I just have mine a hole straight through the floor and then when we're on road trips that we let the kids pee in it and just <laughs> let it out on the road and 
nobody knew if the guy was serious or not. Like, everybody, <laughs> are you kidding me? That's illegal. Some people thought it was great and hilarious, but a lot of people gave this guy a lot of crap. And he was just taken from the conversation. He didn't say anything and just let everybody dangle. And then after a while, he <laughs> said, so literally the hole was right in yeah. front of the rear tire, but <sighs> they had problems with shit hitting cars behind him. <laughs> so he had to move the toilet to behind the rear tires so it wouldn't spray as bad to other cars. And he left it at that too. And everybody just lost their shit in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> there were like a thousand comments yeah. it was so funny and still nobody to this day knows if that guy is <laughs> will forever be a mystery we'll never know i can't wait for the day where one of us ends up behind him and we're like oh my god it's real <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh, we should have gotten you with you did he come all the way from the earth <laughs> yeah. Danny wants to know if anyone would do this all over again. Like if you, I guess if you, would you build another schoolie all over again? Oh, I can, I can, I can. This is kind of a funny story because we're here at the shop with two guys, and um, Joe is always teasing Randy. He's like, "What are you going to do when you get the bus done?" And some guy, somebody comes and offers you a whole bunch of money. Are you going to, are you going to sell it and do it again? And I told Randy, if he wants to end up in a divorce, then go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing this again. You know. After 43 years, there's where the line's drawn. <laughs> no, no, more, no more damn buses, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, need, I need a few, I, I need a few years and then we can renegotiate. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Cam and Cat? Would you guys build again? I, um, you it, might. You maybe have to ask us the after it's done because uh, you guys are not. I you guys know. are so much further ahead than us. That's the thing. Um, yeah. But I'd probably say uh, do it for a couple of years, and if you wanted something smaller, that's the only thing I could ever think of. Yeah, because we have a forty so. foot right now, so you know if we really want to go smaller. But you know, I guess you know it's good starting at a forty foot because if you know if you want to go down, then it's just way less work to do. I, so. I, <laughs> I, I don't know because I mean it's it's actually harder than building a house. I'll I'll tell you that right yeah. now. So and there's lots of curves and there's everything and you know it's all custom. You, you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's way harder than a house. Yeah. I, I would agree with what you guys just said that right now it's just the right now we're trying to finish ours. We're not even thinking about doing another one. Once we're done with ours and we get to enjoy it, then we can even start even thinking about doing another one, but that's yeah. not anywhere in the plans right now. Right now it's <laughs> finishing the one yeah. we have so we can enjoy it and, and seeing where that takes us. That's, yeah. that's what I would say. I would say if we ever did do it again, it would not to be this, to this uh, level, I guess, not to this capacity. It would be something smaller. And I think that's interesting what you said about us selling it because I think people who sell their buses, I just can't fathom that because yeah. what it's worth to us, I don't think anybody's got that kind of cash. <laughs> so, <laughs> because nobody is gonna be willing to pay you what you put into it, not only for the material, but for your time and efforts and thought and, and struggles. research and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I just, we would never, sell it if anything like you guys said we would either rent it out or let people you know stay in it use it as another source of income or you know if we live in a bus for a year and for some reason we hate bus life and we bought a house we would use it maybe for weekend trips or you know something like that i don't think something that we've put so much time effort and care into we would ever be able to get rid of and i mean if it meant like if we finished and traveled and want to do it again maybe something smaller if we jump back to where we were, probably we'd probably do the same exact thing. <laughs> Maybe hopefully do it smarter or spend more money on better tools. But you know. Well, are, are any of you guys going to have a tow vehicle? Yep. Yeah. We're considering. Hoping we're going to we're gonna get a, a Tesla truck to tow behind the bus. <laughs> 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 the bus. 
With the I think we're going to get a Jeep <laughs> no, to tow behind. I, yeah, we're going to get a Jeep to yeah. tow behind. So we can either tow it or just drive one of them if we don't really want to tow it. So we have to sell both of our cars so we yeah. can get a Jeep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have a Subaru, but I, we don't want to have to put we something want up on. Time, if we yeah. want to tow it. Because there's no point on having a trailer on the bus. Like, if you have to dump the trailer in order to get the car off, it's just... We just want something you can flat tow, so we neither of our cars that we can do that with. So and then I I traded in my seventy three Jimmy to get all the electrical done, so all the solar and the batteries, and and I've okay. had that since I was like eighteen years old, so it was pretty sad. <laughs> but we weren't gonna use it. And that was a good trade. That was a good trade. And that's a lot of money worth of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we are, that's our, our plan is to have a, a tow vehicle. We have one vehicle that's on its absolute last leg and we're hoping that it lasts until the end of the build. And then the other one, our goal is to uh, tow it behind, but we are prepared to drive separately until, you know, he gets a little more comfortable just driving the bus, then practice, you know, either Sunday drives or something like that with a tow vehicle and then move on to that rather than just, hey, by the way, you drive this little bitty tiny car, now drive this, you know, 50 foot group of vehicles now, a whole fleet by yourself, <laughs> ready to go. So we know it's gonna take a lot of practice and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but that's that's the plan. We just I put the clips on the pickup today and the backup camera in the day before. <laughs> yeah, so we the backup camera. But yeah, the idea of pulling that, she's all, she is from the get-go. If you're going to have a 40-foot bus, it didn't make any sense to not have a vehicle with you, whether it's driven or towed, right. either way, because you're not going to take a 40-foot bus. It's, you have to make sure the parking lot's okay to go in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little daunting. But every time I take the bus, think about this, when you're driving the bus everywhere that you went, what would it have the tow vehicle have done and everywhere every time i thought that through i never backed up anywhere so you can't back up that's the hitch with the tow uh, yeah. but yeah. you can't back up so then you want to make sure you got the one that's easy to get loose so that they can drive it out of the way which is just like what we did with like you guys are saying we're going to do flat tow instead of a trailer tow because it's easier to yeah. look a flat tow than to have to deal with the trailer so, so we went, we went yeah. to get a Jeep, we went to look at Jeeps and we were looking at Jeeps and there was this Ford F-150 that was on sale because it was a year, a year old model. And I was like, F-150 is one of the models that has a factory flat toe in it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. You, you yeah. Five times and it goes into flat toe mode. So we're halfway. Yeah. Into so, that. so we got, we got the pickup instead of the Jeep. Because it was nice. really yeah. affordable. That would be a good idea, too. I haven't thought about that. Half the price it of a half, Jeep. Yeah. Those Jeeps are ridiculous. Even when they're used, they're ridiculously high. I mean, price. we would be getting an old Jeep. I want to get, like a, I <laughs> get a CJ or an FJ, you know, one of those. Yeah. If you're going to get a Jeep cheap, it's going to be 40 years old, man. It ain't going to be. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know how to work on those engines. I'm good. But it was a trade off because then you can't take friends with you you know yeah we just got we're, we're more worried about our dogs though that's the biggest yeah. thing I guess. yeah we don't want to have to yeah. you know leave our dogs certain places or in the bus they're or needy. just being able to they're so needy go to the, you know just go to the grocery store you know if you need something you don't want to take the 40 foot <laughs> bus with you everywhere you go <laughs> yeah. so yeah, we're definitely yeah. gonna have to have a vehicle for sure <laughs> But I, I'm with you, Meredith. I've told Benny, I said, I'll gladly drive the pickup until you get comfortable, you know, drive. Because it's, it's, it's a huge <laughs> I'll drive. I'm not driving the bus yet. So he's going to learn it first. <laughs> oh, honey, I want to be in that front seat. Yeah. I don't want you to be up there and me back there. I want to be together. That's right. That's the plan. That's the dream, man. Am I the only girl right that's next. driven their bus yet, though? Huh? Am I the only girl that's driven the bus yet? Yeah, I haven't drove. I haven't. You haven't ours. driven it? No. Or no, I'm saying I have driven it. So I didn't know if you have if you've driven your guys' buses yet. She won't. Not I'm yet. Not this. yet. <laughs> she is a bus driver, apparently. Yeah, I'm a bus driver now. <laughs> <laughs> So I, well, I think you guys a great story. I, I met a couple that we 
we're friends with over on the coast and we went to have lunch discussing this adventure before it ever started. And I asked the man, I said, well, well, you know, get stuck, turn around or whatever. And he's all like, what are you asking me for? I never drove the bus. She always drove the bus. Oh, that's <laughs> good. I, I Karen hasn't so even driven it yet. No, like, I have She won't love me. She won't love me. She's like, this is not how you drive it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll let you drive it. But, but truth be known, Randy is geographically challenged. So if I had to rely on him for navigation, dude, we all over the place. You guys saying, hey, you don't know where the hell she's going. I need help. <laughs> So we know I'm a better co-pilot to navigate. She's like, uh, she's like really walking cool. south. I'm like, <laughs> it's real good if the if the other driver is blocking like through lot when we came home and we went through With Las Vegas bus. and she was in the vehicle behind me, if she could switch lanes and block that lane for me. So yeah, that would be really right. nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is advantages. So but yeah. Yeah, I yeah. feel like he Welcome, we're rolling on. Two hours. Oh no! I love talking Ow. to you guys. We could probably talk to you guys all night, and the comments are still just ripping. You guys have more steam. Or should we call her a night? Hmm. We should probably. Call her. We should call huh? her a night. Yeah. Yes, again, we're gonna do. We'll always we leave. We still have to cook dinner ourselves, so. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so beautiful. Thank you for joining us. I want to make an apology to the comments. We could not keep up tonight. Yeah. But I think you guys were mixing and mingling amongst yourselves, which just like warms my heart to no end. Um, we've got a really beautiful community here. If you guys haven't checked out our beautiful friends, Marathon <laughs> Paco, The Naps, Wonder Boy Bus, they're on Instagram. Definitely, please follow them. Um, enjoy their journeys too, because there's so much to learn here from these beautiful people. And all of their links to get in touch with them on their YouTube channels and Instagrams are all in the description right below this video. So definitely check them out, subscribe and follow their journeys as well, because they've got a wealth of knowledge and all sorts of really cool things that they're all doing uniquely in their builds. And uh, we love to follow them, so you should too. Yeah, okay, thanks Can we get guys. a link for Brian's hat? What? what? I want a link for Brian's hat. <laughs> <laughs> I have a link. I don't even know where I got this. We want a link for your rat. Just go through his Amazon link and then you can get it. Oh, it's like for a link for Frank. Or <laughs> <laughs> I <can't remember>. oh, <laughs> whatever. Well, we, I just want to, I want to personally thank you guys for doing this. It was a great idea. And, and yeah, it was fun. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I can speak for all of you guys. It, it was a hoot. I mean, I really enjoyed it. So thank you so much for putting all the background work to do this yeah and thank everybody thank you so much we appreciate y'all yeah next time you. we do mukbang so next time, next time mukbang. We have <laughs> worked out on how to stream yeah. this live with all four of us so yeah. mukbang is doable now yeah dirty <laughs> You're promising it. I, yeah. I don't know. People said they'd be down to eat with us, and we think that would be just silly. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can eat and talk at the same time. <laughs> no, sure. We're going to have ribs when we do it. <laughs> nice. Floppy Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Definitely nice. So good. All right, everyone. Okay. It was real. It was we'll, fun. We'll catch up Suckers. on the Happy <laughs> <Suckers. Suckers. Suckers. laughs> Happy holidays and happy festivals. Right. Merry Christmas, Merry happy holidays. Merry Christmas, guys. Bye. 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 All right, so I think the live stream's ending. Goodbye. I'm stop on the live stream, but the Zoom should keep going. So, has it ended? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it ended. Are they